Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to all of you in this beautiful, cool space. Aren't we blessed? Yes. yes. So we just pray the power doesn't go out. <laughs> Whoever you are or wherever you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. We ask you to look in your bulletin for, I uh, want to talk about a few inserts. You have the connection card. If you're visiting with us today for the first time, we'd like you to fill it out. Also, you can put any other information, members and visitors, on here that you'd like me to know. Right now, we're asking everyone to give us emergency contact information. Uh, if you haven't already done so, please fill that out. We're putting it in our database system, and then if something happens, we can get a hold of people uh, as necessary. We recently had an incident. We were not able to reach any family members. So, uh, And it is on an app on my phone. We don't share it with anyone else. It's confidential but we would appreciate you giving us that information. Also, uh, you can put prayer requests on here if it's for pastor only or if it's to go in the weekly email. Then I get these cards on Monday and make my phone calls and say our prayers. I also invite you to silence your cell phones now so we can have a full hour or a little more maybe of attention to God and to one another. Today is Holy Communion and our table is open to everyone. We believe that it is God's gift to us. And so you don't have to believe anything. You don't have to have any creeds. You just come with open hands and open arms. And we will explain how it works when we get to that time. So we're going to uh, start our service with the prelude. Brothers, sisters, we have come to worship with Nancy on the trumpet.
Good morning. Isn't it wonderful to be in this place together? I invite you to stand if you like and join me in a responsive call to worship as I begin. Come, let us worship God. Our hearts are filled with joy. And we are here together. In the place of God's love and welcome. All are invited here. To worship, praise, and give thanks to our loving God. Let us worship and praise God with great rejoicing. Let us pray together. Loving God, God open us our hearts to the mysteries of faith and the ordinary and extraordinary moments. Come near us today. Give us the strength that we may experience your power to demonstrate your almighty love to all creation. We continue to praise God in our hymn, Oh, for a thousand times to sing, on page number 42 of your hymnal. <laughs> Amen. Amen. 
hear the assurance of God's grace. We are God's beloved children, and together we can make a difference in the world. Amen. Amen. I invite you to stand and sing this little light of mine. We're learning names because at home, you have names for things. Refrigerator, stove, bed. But here at church, we kind of have some odd names. So do you remember what we call this? This is the altar. I think you're all, uh, almost all of you are new today. I haven't been in this lesson before. This is called the altar. This is called the pulpit. And uh, this is called a stole. And this is called an all. And so these are all kind of churchy words. Instead of a bench, we call this a pew. That's a funny name, a pew. But today, I'm going to talk about the hymnal. So this looks like a regular book you might read, but in the church, we call it a hymnal. And we sing our songs out of it, but not all of them, and I'll show you. And there's many things in here besides songs. There's some lessons in here, like for us to have worship. We could use the worship out of here. And in the back, let's say, I say to you, Psalm 23, the Lord is my shepherd. I wonder if we have a song about Psalm 23. Well, in the back, there's a place that says Scripture Index, and we look Psalm 23. And sure enough, let's see, there better be one in here. Wow, there's four songs in the book on Psalm 23. So we sometimes choose our songs. But we have a different kind of song book for next Sunday. Guess what we're doing next Sunday? We're going camping. We're not going to be here at church. We're going camping at Big Trees, Friday night, Saturday, and Sunday. So everybody, hopefully, will come to church Sunday morning. This is also a song book. So these are our songs we're going to sing at camp. So it's not really a hymnal. It's a song book. But these are the two things we use. And then today in your bulletin, there's something called an insert. Can I have your insert there for this and this has songs that aren't in that book and they aren't in the camp book. And you're going to be in Sunday school when we sing Come to the Table of Grace, which a friend of Dr. Darrell's wrote, and Will You Come and Follow Me? Now, I have to tell you a secret about this. We have to get special permission to print these. We can't just print them because you know what that is? That's stealing somebody else's work. So what we do is we look these up, we have a little program on our computer, and we say, can we get permission to do this? And sure enough, there it is. And then we put these words down here. We let everybody know that we got permission and we paid the person who wrote it. They get paid money for writing that song. So we always want to be faithful in our church whenever we do anything in our service to make sure we do the things that are right. Let's have a prayer. Holy God, we thank you for songs. We thank you for hymnals and camp books and for inserts. We thank you for the way we can tell our story through our songs. We thank you for children and families, and we ask your blessing on them in Sunday school today. Amen. Amen. Okay, you may go to class. This song is simply titled A Song of Ascents. It is another in a series of songs sung by pilgrims on the way to Jerusalem at East. These songs are giving us a pattern of preparation to meet God and the people. 
I raise my eyes to fix my gaze on you, for your throne resides in the heavens. Just as the eyes of servants closely watch the hand of their masters, just as the maid carefully observes the slightest gesture of her mistress. In the same way, we look to you, Eternal One, waiting for our God to pour out his mercy upon us. O oh, Eternal One, show us your mercy. We beg you. We are not strangers to contempt and pain. We have suffered more than our share of ridicule and contempt from self-appointed critics who live easy lives and pompously display their own importance. We can certainly relate to this song today. Let us praise God as Nancy leads us in an anthem of praise. continue with our gospel from the book of Mark, chapter 6. Jesus left that place and came to his hometown, and disciples followed him. On the Sabbath, he began to teach in the synagogue, and many who heard him were astounded. They said, where did this man get all this? What is this wisdom that has been given to him? What deeds of power are being done by his hand? Is not this the carpenter, the son of Mary, the brother of James and Joseph, Judas and Simon? And are not his sisters here with us? And they took offense at him. Then Jesus said to them, Prophets are not without honor except in their own hometown and among their own kin and in their own house. And he could do no deed of power there except that he laid his hands on a few sick people and cured them. He was amazed at their unbelief. Then he went about among the villages teaching. He called the twelve and began to send them out two by two and gave them authority over the unclean spirits. He ordered them to take nothing for the journey except a staff, no bread, no bag, no money in their belts, but to wear sandals and not to put on two tunics. He said to them, Whenever you enter a house, stay there until you leave the place. 
if any place will not welcome you and they refuse to hear you as you leave, shake off the dust that is on your feet as a testimony against them. So they went out and proclaimed that all should repent. They cast out many demons and anointed with oil many who were sick and cured them. It's kind of an odd passage. I really would rather not preach on it. It's not very exciting. Shake off the dust and not being accepted in your own hometown. But you know me, I'm obedient. And if that's the scripture for the day, then I'm going to do my best. So I've worked hard at this to try to make some sense of it for us. Uh, in, there are actually two different related stories about Jesus' ministry in this passage today. In the first story, we heard that Jesus is in his own hometown. But instead of a warm welcome, he receives hostility and rejection. Initially, they're impressed by his teaching, but when they realize who he is, they take offense. John Spence says, when someone tells you, you've changed, it usually means that you aren't quite living up to the way they think you should live. So that's kind of what happened to Jesus. They did not expect this from a carpenter's son. He could be the same person teaching in front of them, but because of his family lineage, they didn't think that he would be wise. Their initial impression of Jesus suddenly changed. How could they have been so impressed by the lessons of a carpenter's son? The people in the synagogue were offended that a carpenter's son had such wisdom and was speaking in the temple. Because you see, they were used to having learned men who had spent years studying the text come and talk to them. So what is going on in this passage? Well, let's remember that in the Gospel of Mark, the author is trying to talk a lot about the authority of Jesus because he is writing to people who are getting mixed messages in their time of saying, well, Jesus wasn't really the Son of God, or maybe he had some divinity. And so Mark's saying, this is who Jesus is. So in the Gospel of Mark, all of these stories are going to show the authority of Jesus. We see that he's rejected by familiar people in Nazareth, but he gets a warm reception from people outside of his neighborhood. I often say we hurt the people we love the most. I mean, isn't it true that you're free to mouth off to somebody in your family than you would be with a neighbor? I've actually been in places when I was a broker, and I would hear conversations before I would knock on the door. And it would be, get your effing you know what off the sofa. Get over here, blah, blah, blah. And I'd knock on the door. Hello, Bonnie, how are you today? It's so good to see you. Whew, change. But that's sometimes what happens. Or we're pretty free to, you know, tell each other whether we like something or not, but then around others, we put on this happy face. That might not be such a bad thing, but we often are the most unkind to the people we love the most. We see in this story a need for people to play out a social norm over faith. Instead of having faith, they took offense because his family wasn't quite what they thought he should be. And they might have been saying this, well, look, he abandoned his family, because we have that in a previous scripture. I said, why aren't you with your mother and your father and taking care of your family? Here you are out following and making up some kind of cult. So they're really hard on him. And what does he do by, with his disciples in the second part? He said, if you're not accepted, shake off the dust. And then I got to thinking, shake off the dust might be a really, really good lesson for us now. Because... First of all, the expected thing did not get the results Jesus needed to share his ministry. He could not stay at home and preach to people he knew and think that all was going to be well. The expectation didn't happen. Sometimes we need to shake off the dust and move on. So what is the dust that halts us from giving God's good news? Well, it might be people with whom we disagree. It might be political topics that halt conversations and raise angry words. Or it might be our fear of saying something that will receive an unwelcome response. And so we're halted in our steps. We're not welcomed because these things might arise. Jesus seems to say here, shake it off and go on. In spite of embarrassment or rejection 
or even anger, Jesus tells them, go do the work and heal people. He doesn't say, cram it down their throats, reject them or be mean. No, he says, just shake it off. Just shake it off and move on. That's really hard to do when somebody calls us an idiot and says they don't know where we're reading our news. Or when somebody says, how can you support somebody who's not an American? And on and on. These things come in our faces every day. So where is the good news? You know I like to find the good news in the passage somewhere. Sometimes the good news comes as a little bit of discipline. But maybe Jesus is saying, don't take rejection so hard. When we do that, perhaps we're giving out of our own ego or what we want. When what we say or what we do is so, we get so offended when somebody doesn't accept it. Hmm, maybe we need to look at our motive. Secondly, he says, keep doing the good work. Don't give up. Don't stay stuck where you are, though. Move on. I mean, there's no point in having a two-hour conversation with somebody who is opposite, up on the opposite side of what you're talking about. Find something you can agree or just move on. There, I remember many years ago, there was somebody who was so mean and nasty to me, constantly told me I was going to hell, told me that my children were going to hell. And I was talking with my therapist about this, and she said, divorce her. And I said, well, what do you mean divorce her? She said, why are you in this relationship? Why do you keep going back for punishment? Divorce her. I said, well, that's not the Christian thing to do. Don't give me that Christian crap, she said, Bonnie. She said, you need to be responsible. She said, this is abusive behavior, and you're sitting in it, and you're just letting it happen because you're thinking this is what Jesus wants you to do. And she said, it's not true. And so we figured, she had a way she wanted me to do it. She wanted me to meet with the person and say, I'm done with this relationship. I was too chicken. And then she wanted me to write a letter. So I wrote a letter, and I threw it away. So what I finally did was I just ghosted her. That's new now. Back when I did it, it wasn't even a turn. But I just stopped taking their phone calls because I couldn't bear it. And I, I felt guilty for many years about it because I thought I broke it, but it was so damaging to me and so painful to me. There was no point in going on. My therapist was right. Shake it off and move on. Sometimes in the church, we need to shake off our dust as well. There are people who say, well, we always did it this way, Pastor Bonnie. Back in so-and-so, we had the best youth group ever. While we used to go on mission trips. Well and good. Thank you. I'm shaking it right off because that is not where we are today. Shaking it off and moving on. What are we doing? We're camping up at big trees with the whole church because we don't have 25 in a youth group. But we got 70 to 100 in our church. Sometimes people say, oh, the church is dying. People don't like religion anymore. I, they've been hurt so bad by the church. Christianity has given Christ a bad name. I'm not going there. Well, we can say, oh, that's too bad. Or we say, guess what? At our church, it's different. At our church, we walk with you on the path, and you can ask any questions you want, and we will walk with you. We won't necessarily have the answers, but we'll walk with you. We don't have to fall under the pressure of a county that tells us we cannot have a homeless shelter. Shake it off, shake off their nonsense and get down there and do something about it. People keep coming to me and say, when are we gonna put up a shelter in your parking lot? Well, I don't know, I'm not the only one here, you know, somebody else can call the county or somebody else can just pull a little AV unit in here for all I know. I mean, who's gonna get on us after all? These people that are homeless are living in this heat that is dreadful, dreadful this week. So we're going to shake off those nasty comments, those naysayers that says, oh, we can't have it in our backyard. Excuse me. They're our neighbors. We can have it in our backyard, but we have to do it. Sometimes the most powerful change comes from a negative comment. Years ago, I, uh, when I was in my 1920, I, was, I had a rough childhood, and some of you knew about it, and I would make sure everybody knew about it. I mean, woe is me. If anybody met me, <laughs> I would say, oh, I've had a terrible life. You know, I would also tell them about God. And my best friend said to me one day, I am sick and tired of hearing you tell about your childhood. She said, why don't you use it as a branch instead of a crutch? Whoa. That statement changed my life, literally changed my life, because I remember the moment right now. So from that moment on, I began to see my life differently. 
Yeah, it was crappy. Yes, sometimes I need to tell the story, but as a branch on which to grow. So a negative comment, which I was mad at her for a week. I would not speak to her. And she's like, Bonnie, I didn't mean to hurt you. I, didn't, I just think somebody needed to tell you. She was right. Sometimes a negative encounter can open us to possibilities. We might worry less about the outcome and more about the interchange. It's about blessing and loving our neighbors with all our hearts, I think is what Jesus is saying here. A seminarian wrote this about this passage. When we are brand new disciples, we can barely wait to be sent out on mission for Christ. We're eager to proclaim, to shout God's praise to the people, to comfort, guide, and heal. But time takes its toll on us. We begin to let doubt assail our enthusiasm. We hear comments from people who don't like our style of preaching. We hear comments about the way our worship is. And so we become weary. And then we hear Mark's gospel passage. Jesus is ridiculed by his hometown people. They can't imagine that one of their own is actually the chosen one of God. They're focusing on what they know, that he's a carpenter, the son of a carpenter, brother to James, Joseph, Judas, and Simon, and several sisters. He reminds them that they are short-sighted. And with sadness, he recalls that the prophets were not honored in their own hometown. So this is the world into which Jesus sent his disciples, and we are being sent today. He suggests that relying on the hospitality of people when they can, and when it's not, shake it off your shoes and move on. You know, if you're like me, we have trouble with this because we want to be liked, and we want to be supported. And so sometimes that gets in the way of us telling the truth or doing what we need to do because we want to be liked. A minister friend tells me this. She said, I came from a family of ministers and church workers. I grew up in the church vertically and horizontally. The family is very conservative, including the theology I was raised in in my family. I am the one who is less conservative. After being in seminary for almost two years, I'm now more inclined to a more liberal progressive perspective on the interaction of church and society. As I continue my journey and become a minister, my family calls me the prodigal Christian. Mark 6 makes me think of how it might feel going back to my hometown to preach. I can imagine my aunts and uncles raising their eyebrows. My cousins would say, well, it happened to you. And this is a woman. And just like in the passage, people said, isn't that the daughter of Pastor Nathan? What in the world happened to her? She goes on to say, acceptance is very important in my culture. And if I hear people react from me this way, it would affect me greatly. The hardest rejection that a person can experience is often the rejection for their own family, friends, and loved ones. And many of us are experiencing in that, this in this political climate. I remember the day when you never knew what anybody's political party was. You just never knew it. There were no signs out front. You were politely not discussing, and you might discuss issues, but you never knew. And now it's become polarized. But we can change this. We can shake it off, friends. We can shake off the dust. Her father told her, who was a minister, said, when you get to be a minister, there are two things you should do. Uh, you should never go to your home church and meet a pastor. And when you've been in your church and become too familiar, you ask your superintendent to move you on. So that was his advice, but hopefully she's still in seminary and doing well. You know, we're facing a lot of controversies right now about immigration policies and their implementations, and we all have different opinions on it. And our personal opinions may or may not be accepted by others. And that's, that's true with environmental issues, hunger, homelessness, systemic injustice. And it's great that our church is involved in feeding the hungry, we give shelter to the homeless, we accept people regardless of their sexuality, and we show acts of love to our neighbor. Unfortunately, there's always one or two people who don't like what we do. Remember the posters who said when we had our LGBTQ celebration, they said, Pastor Bonnie is going to hell. I kept taking them down. They put them up, and I kept taking them down. So what do we do? Do we sulk? Do we cower in these instances? Or do we shake it off? Do we stop doing who, who we are? Do we retreat from our showing our love? Well, Jesus didn't stop showing who he was. He kept on and he told his disciples, shake off the dust before you leave. If people reject our acts of love for our neighbors, 
Let us shake off that dust of disappointment. Let us not retreat to our little corners, but move forward to places where our actions and identities will be accepted and do it right here where we live. This is a time for powerful witness of love and grace. Let us imagine our homes, our church, our communities, where all people feel loved and accepted. So this is our task, to shake off the dust and share the good news. Amen. 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 So our song for today is on your insert, Will You Come and Follow Me? And uh, I chose this because it, it's very powerful, the questions we'll be asking, uh, God is asking us to do. So I invite you to stand if you like.
We pray for Jess, for Mitch and Michelle, for Kara, Max, and Allie, Teresa, Summer, Cara, Cindy, Katie, Stephen, Dodie, Tabitha, Laura, Marco, Daniel, Gail, and Reverend Marty. God, we lift them to you for your healing and your comfort. We know there are many others who might also be suffering. We pray too for those who have COVID this week that are feeling very sick, <clears throat> that they might find rest in this heat. We pray for those who have no place to sleep or have a home that are in our parking lots each week. Show us the way to take care of them. Help us to be that cool cup of water that they need on a hot day. We ask your mercy and grace as we are in a tough political climate in our world and in our own country. Help us to be bold when we are facing injustices. Let us speak up when we see things happening that harm others. Let us step away from relationships that are abusive. And God, help us to love ourselves so that in loving ourselves, we can love others. We pray this day for our children and our parents. We are so grateful that we can come together to church to learn about you and learn how to be kind to each other. We thank you for this day. We pray the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our loving God, who is in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Let us not fall into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Friends, we are here to follow the ways of Jesus. One of the actions we take to do this <coughs> is with our offerings. We give money to support our ministry and the lives of many in our community. Please give with joy. You may place your connection cards in the offering place at this time. Would the ushers please come forward?
broken bread for broken mm -hmm. people. Let us feast. Amen. We will now share the cup. The uh, red is wine, the white is grape juice. And again, please hold your cup until all have been served. We will sing, eat this bread. Beloved, a cup of blessing. Let us pray. Ah, God, we've feasted at your table. We've received your grace and blessing and mercy. May we now shake off the dust of complacency, the dust of rejection, and share your love with everyone. Amen. Amen. We'll now sing our hymn, Community of Christ, number 314.
share a few announcements with you. Today we have our new member class and potluck after worship. Uh, anyone is welcome to stay if you want to find out any information about our church. Today we're talking about the structure of Open Door United Church of Christ. And we have some of our team leaders speaking with us. It's going to be wonderful. So just stay with us after social hour. We will have our lunch in the <coughs> social hall. And we'll have our meeting here in the sanctuary. So you heard me already tell the children we're going camping. Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Uh, we'll leave on Sunday at Big Trees. The camp, <coughs> excuse me, ground has already been paid for. We are at the group site. If you go up towards Big Trees, it's on the left. But they tell me you have to stop in at the visitor little booth first. You have to pay for parking. I'll try to get them to have you not pay for parking, but I think they're gonna make you pay $10. And then you go across the street and uh, we'll try to have signs up for where you are. Put your tent up or your RV up or whatever. And then there's also a sign up sheet today for food. So we, you make your own breakfast and your own lunch, but we're sharing Friday night supper and Saturday night supper. So we're having tacos Friday night, and I just need the fixings. So there's a list of like a bag of lettuce, a bag of tomatoes. And then Saturday, we're having hamburgers and hot dogs. So we need macaroni salad, stuff like that. I'll bring the hot dogs and hamburgers and the buns. So please sign up for that. If not, I'll have to make phone calls. I really don't want to do that this week. So please sign up. And if you didn't sign up yet, we have a lot of room there. So don't be afraid. If you're not camping, you can also come up. You can come up Friday night and stay till you want to go home. You can come up all day Saturday. And you can come, and we hope everyone will come Sunday for worship at 10 o'clock. Jerry? I just have a question. <coughs> if, people have, if people have questions, I don't know if they're going to have to bother you. Who is actually in charge of the family camp? Well, so they can call somebody. Yeah. They're going to have to call me because of Patty being home. Oh, okay. right. Yeah, so I'm doing Patty's work right now, which is okay. So, and I'm on myself, you know, leave me a message. I have no problem. I'll be happy to talk with you. Okay. I'm excited about it. So it's really going to be a good time. We don't have as many children joining us this year. Uh, some of our youth are now working. Can you believe it? They have jobs. Oh my wow. boy, they grew up too fast. And wow. then um, some people are away for a family event. So but we're going to have a grand time. So I hope you will all come. Uh, I talked about the family trip. Oh, so COVID is a little bit on the rise. Our nurse, Diane Hosmer, talked with me. We have several people in our congregation that have COVID. So just give you a little warning here. If you have the sniffles or a fever or sore throat, please don't come to church. I love you, love you, love you, but I don't want to get it. So, and I'm probably not going to be hugging. I've been hugging, but I'm probably not going to be hugging because my immune system, you know, is kind of shot. So I will shake hands or greet you from a distance. Maybe I won't even shake hands today. Because it's going around, and uh, we, we want we, to be very careful. It's a new variant. Yeah, it's a new variant. Yeah. 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 So um, boosters are available. What did you say? Boosters are available. boosters are available. Yeah, there's Diane might be putting some information on our Facebook, so go ahead and look for that. But we do pray for those who are suffering. We have at least one person who's quite sick with it, so that is a troubling time. Thank you for your contributions to Patty and George Haskell. Uh, you can continue to give if you like. Just make your check out to FCCM, put George in the memo spot, or go on in line, put it under pastor's discretionary, put George. Uh, and all of you have been doing that so beautifully. It's been really great. The treasurers are telling me, you know, they, they let me know what to write the check out for. So, And Patty is extremely grateful. She's back with him. Um, they changed some of his medication. He was having a little rough time. So we're going to continue to pray for them. So let us stand and sing our benediction song together.
for the benediction today, I invite you to shake off the dust. See what good things God has in store for you this week and share the good news. Amen. Amen. I'm going to do an introduction to the postlude today. Daryl is playing Toccata in D minor by Bach. And it's a composition of one of the oldest sources of saying that Bach wrote it probably between 1704 and 1750. And some of you will recognize it because it became popular in 1940 in the Disney movie Fantasia. Yeah. And then it is also part of Phantom of the Opera. So you will hear this and you might be saying, so why have this as part of our service today? Such a great piece. Well, many reasons. Sometimes it's nice to hear something familiar and it gives us a smile. Oh yes, I know that. And it's triumphant. And so it's a great way to send us into the world with the love and grace of Jesus. Thirdly, we have a great organ on which to hear it. And Daryl, with many hours of practice, gives us insight into what the gift of the organ has to offer. I will warn you, it might be a little loud at the beginning. So it's a difficult place to pay, play, and so we're especially grateful that Daryl chose to share, learn it and share it with us. So let us go forth with the Toccata in D minor by Bach, and then we'll have his dismissal. <laughs> Go forth in joy. See you in social life.